Right now it is Thursday night and it's almost the weekend. I'm very much looking forward to it because I have lessons again on Sunday. Um, this week I decided to do dual lessons. The only week I will do that because obviously I can't all the time, it's too expensive. How cute is this? How cute is this? Hi, puppers. <laughs> I like when your nose is nearly dry. Oh. So yeah, this week I decided to do dual lessons because I am trying out a lesson at another barn. So the one that I did last week, after I had my lesson, I actually did feel like I liked the instructor, but I wanted to try out this other place because I don't want to just go to one and stick to it without trying others out first so I can see and experience how I feel. The barn that I'm trying out this week is much more expensive but it seems more structured and i like that and i also feel like usually when they do that they probably feel more professional in that sense and you might get the feeling that they know what they're doing better since it is an introductory lesson they have two of them at 50 dollars each and then after that private lessons are 65 dollars compared to 40 so that is a very big deal that is basically a hundred dollar difference the main reason I'm deciding to do dual lessons this weekend for one of the introductory lessons, they're not going to have me ride at all. So when I first heard that, I was kind of not happy about it because paying $50 just to hear them talk for an hour, I don't know. It's kind of what they do and I have to get past that if I did want to take lessons, so I might as well just do it. So since I'm not going to be on a horse for one lesson this weekend, I was like, all right, I'll just keep my other lesson so I can ride at least. So that's going to be $90 this weekend, but I am really hoping and I'm very interested to see how quickly I progress. I don't want to be cocky, but I just think it would be very interesting to see how quickly I pick up on it. So that's on Sunday and I have been looking forward to it ever since Monday. <laughs> Actually, the main reason that I wanted to talk tonight is because I discovered something very interesting today. I think it is very interesting. Maybe other people that have a dog or are interested in dog philosophy stuff would be interested to hear about it. So, okay, first off, I have been using the travel crate at home lately because it is two inches longer and maybe one inch wider, but basically it just seems more roomy for her and I liked that idea. And since she's potty trained and all of that, more space wouldn't mean that she's more likely to have an accident like it normally means when they are young and a puppy. So I decided to use that regularly for her at home now just so she's more comfortable. But what I realized yesterday, I noticed there were scratch marks on the bottom of the crate, on the crate floor. Scratch marks to the point that the top layer got scratched off and you could kind of see through to the floor based on the way it's constructed. And when I saw that, I was not happy about it because I envisioned Riley to be standing up and digging aggressively like you normally picture dogs to be when they are in a crate and they're not happy about it. So when I made that connection, I was like, no way. I have had her for so long. She has been so great in the crate. And I always just assumed that whenever I'm gone, she's quiet. After I saw that, I kind of got obsessed about it. So this is something that I have noticed about myself for select things and I'm not really proud about it. I'm not really happy about it because I allow certain things to stress me out, overly stress me out way more than necessary. And then I kind of put my mind to it way too much and Usually during that period, I'm just not happy. I'm just kind of anxious and I'm frustrated and I'm nervous and all of that. After I saw the scratches on the crate, I was like, what the fuck? I need to see what she's doing when I'm gone. So my setup isn't ideal for that because my camera only records up to 30 minutes, which is actually probably good enough because I'll talk about it later. But on the other hand, the other thing I was trying was my webcam and obviously it's way too far from my bedroom. So I was trying to find wires to extend my cable all the way to my room, 
but I don't have anything. So I decided to buy a USB extension cable, which I think is probably really unnecessary, but I bought that and I was going to try to set it up so I would have a webcam on her whenever I'm gone. I put my camera to record her twice today. First time was when I left for work in the morning and then the second time was when I left back to work after lunch. So the first time, so in the morning she didn't do anything, but then during lunch, I saw that she was scratching at the scratched area of the crate and she was kind of biting at it a little bit. But the good thing is that she wasn't in a bad mindset when she was doing it. So that is what's most important to me. I was just so happy to see that she wasn't doing what I thought she was doing. The fact that she was calm while she was just digging and just being bored, that was how I interpreted it. I viewed her actions as just, she was bored, so she was able to do some of that stuff. But the most important thing that I feel like I learned today is that when they are in a soft crate and when they realize that the sides and the floor of the crate are soft and able to be chewed and scratched, then they are more likely to do it and continue doing it. So when she's in the hard crate, I recorded her once and she didn't do anything. But today she did two things. She scratched at the floor of the crate and then she also scratched at the side. I was like licking the side and stuff. Basically what I learned today is that yeah, when I'm gone for three to four hours, they will get bored, right? So what she was doing, I understood kind of, you know, why she's doing it. As long as she's not doing it in an anxious, angry, rebellious mindset, it's okay. But it's still not behavior that I prefer for her to have when I'm gone. I would prefer for her to just lie there and sleep and not destroy my crate gradually, right? Unfortunately, I do think that it makes sense that over time they will be doing this stuff to a soft crate because they know that the crate will allow for her to be doing that and there's no reason for her to stop doing that because I'm not around to tell her not to. It does seem inevitable that the hard crate, the plastic crate, is the one that I will have to use when I'm not home or just makes sense for me to use it all the time at home. Yeah, they can scratch in a hard crate also, but I guess if you think about it, it's just so much easier for them to destroy something soft. I guess their motivation to scratch in a hard crate is drastically lower than if it was a soft crate. For some reason, I'm just surprised to make this discovery. I know, <laughs> I feel like for people that don't have a dog or don't really plan on having a dog or don't care about pets, they think this is a very weird and stupid topic, but I definitely feel like I learned something today. This was a behavior thing for a dog that I did not expect to happen, but I find it very cool that I learned about it. And I guess from now on, it's hard crate and I will have to just save the travel crate for when we are traveling. Damn. She totally juked me out, but I am super happy with the conclusion for this. This literally lasted 24 hours, less than 24 hours, but I'm happy about the conclusion because it further proved that her behavior when I'm gone is still very good. She was just bored and she was in a soft crate that allowed her to be a little bit more destructive than she normally would be in a hard crate. Happy Sunday, everyone. I'm on my way to back-to-back -to -back horseback riding lessons. But first off, I am leaving slightly earlier because I wanted to check out this boot barn store and see if they have some boots that I can try on from a brand, Ariat, I believe is the way you pronounce it. A very popular horse boot brand and I saw a pair online that I like and I could totally just order it online but I had this weird idea that I could stop by the store before my lesson and buy it for my lesson. I'm not really in a rush to buy it today but I guess if I do happen to see it and I also like the fit then I could definitely buy it today. So first off today, my first lesson is the non-riding lesson where I am trying out a new barn and 
going to see what the trainer is like, what the barn is like, and see what their training philosophies are. And then after that is my riding lesson, I guess you can say. It'll be really nice to get more exposure as well to horses because I have noticed that I do feel a little bit timid towards them, which I think or I assume is kind of normal for someone who has not been around them very much because they are large animals, but I feel like you tend to forget how large they are because you're not standing right next to them. The interesting thing about horseback riding lessons is that they really want to teach you everything about the horse. Care probably comes in more later, but before you ride, you need to groom them, you need to clean their hooves. Just being that close up to them and touching them and interacting with them is definitely very new. And also, there are times where, you know, if I need to walk behind the horse, I get a little nervous that I might get kicked. But I feel like those situations are just kind of rare, like something must have spooked the horse or the horse itself might have a personality to do that but if they did they wouldn't be a school horse so I feel like the chances of that actually happening are slim and maybe sometimes when you hear about it or when you see it in the movies it's not that likely to happen. Oh and I guess it is daylight savings time so I have gained an hour. Ah this is why shopping at physical stores is slowly phasing out because I probably should have called the store first to ask about the specific boot I wanted to try on and see if they had in stock but that was my mistake of course I feel like as an organized person that is always the first thing you want to check before you make the drive over here but it's not a complete waste because it's basically in the same direction as lessons I just wanted to stop along the way it is a little disappointing to see that they only have one type of boot throughout the entire store they only have Western boots so those are like the cowboy ones and I'm not totally against those I actually feel like it would be fun to dress up cowboy -y when I want to ride or something but for now I'm not interested in those clothing or boot style I just want not really sure how good of a picture this will come up as, but this is the kind of boot that I want. I feel like the lace-up style makes it look better than a zipper because if it's just a zipper, it's just a zip and then it's all leather and it feels very plain to me, but the lace-up makes it look nicer. And I don't know, a boot like this is just super appealing to me because if it's comfortable to wear, then it could be almost like an everyday boot aside from just riding. So I like that aspect because there are times where I just don't always want to wear sneakers uh, out. So these would be a very nice alternative to that. So it kind of seems like I might have to just order these online since this damn physical store doesn't have it. Alrighty, I need to head over to my lesson. Let me plug in the address. 14 minutes. Uh-oh, I gotta go.
Jesus. 